Hello guys, welcome back to Take Dose and in this video we will look at maximum candies you can get from boxes which is from lead code number 1298. Let's now look at the problem statement. You have n boxes labeled from 0 to n minus 1. You are given 4 arrays, status, candies, keys and contained boxes where status at i is 1 if the ith box is open, it is 0 if the ith box is closed. Candies at i is the number of candies in the ith box. Keys at i is the list of labels of the boxes you can open after opening the ith box. Contained boxes at i is the list of boxes you found inside the ith box. You are given an integer array initial boxes that contains the labels of the boxes you initially have. You can take all the candies in any open box and you can use the keys in it to open the new boxes. And you can also use the boxes you find in it. Return the maximum number of candies you can get following the above rules. Now if you look at the first example here, then in this case uh, we are having 4 boxes because status dots, uh, dot size will give you 4 boxes. As men mentioned in the constraint, status length, candies length, keys length, contain boxes length or are equals to n which is equals to the number of boxes. So you can say that the boxes are numbered from 0 to 3 which are 4 boxes. The status 1 says that this box is open and status 0 says that it, the box is closed. Now the candies are representing the corresponding number of candies in each of the boxes from 0 to 3. The keys are representing when you open a box then you get the key to open some other box, some other closed box, right? So in this case if you see the value at 2 is 1, it is in the form of a list, right? So it is just containing a single key but it can contain multiple keys as well. So in this case when you open box 2 then you get the key for box 1 so that you can change the status of this box 1 from 0 to 1 saying that now you can open box 1 and collect the candies and also collect the keys if there are any key inside the box 1 and and try to open some other boxes isn't it the contained boxes is showing about inside a box what all boxes are present so if at 0 you have 1 comma 2 then this means that inside the box 0 you have box 1 and you have box 2 okay now if you look at the box 1 it is saying it has box 3 inside it so you have box 3 inside box 1. Now if you try to represent the contained boxes the configuration of the contained boxes then you will find that you can represent it in the form of a graph in such a way that if inside 0 you have 1 and 2 then you can form an edge from 0 to 1 and 0 to 2. Now inside 1 if you have 3 then you can form an edge from 1 to 3. Okay inside 2 and 3 there is nothing else and we are done. So this is the entire representation of the contained boxes. Now if you are thinking about why did we use a directed edge and not an undirected edge then I will tell you that inside box 0 let's say you have box 1 then can you say that inside box 1 there will be box 0? Can this happen? Well, this will never happen because if 1 is contained inside 0, how can 0 be contained inside 1? One of them can be true, both of them can never be true, isn't it? So, the undirected edge 0, 1 means that 0 is contained inside 1 and 1 is contained inside 0. That means it is having a bidirectional edge, but that is not true in our problem. In our problem, it says about only one box uh, being contained inside the other box, isn't it? So this entire configuration can be represented by using a directed graph. Now if you ask me about will there be a cycle in the graph, then I will say there will be no cycle in the graph. Because if you want to have a cycle, then let's say inside 0 you have box 1, right? And inside 1 you have box 2, okay? Now if I want to create a cycle from 0 to 1, 1 to 2 and 2 to 0, then inside 2 you should have box 0 but how can you have inside 2 box 0 when 0 contains 1 and 1 contains 2 can you say that 2 contains 0 this will never be possible okay as per the directed edge explanation this will also not be possible and therefore there will be no cycle so what kind of graph is this it is a directed acyclic graph okay so we have understood the entire representation that it is a directed acyclic graph now will you have only a single box inside which there will be other boxes? Well the answer is no. 
you can also have other boxes let's say box number four and inside that you have box number five and if you have to represent it in the form of a graph then you take another node four and from there you make an h to five so this graph is a directed acyclic graph as well as a multi-component system multi-component because you can have multiple boxes separate right independent of each other so it will be multi-component as well now if you look at the initial boxes it is saying about where what box you will get and from where you will start collecting the candies so in this particular problem it is saying that you will start collecting candies from zero okay now you have to save this and you have to start your traversal from node zero you can have multiple initial boxes as well it is in the form of a list in this particular problem you just have one initial box but you can have multiple initial boxes if you start collecting candies from zero first thing that you have to check is is it open if the box is not open then you cannot open it you need key to open it if you don't have the key and the box is not open then you can never open the box okay now for zero you see the box is open if the box is open then in the total uh, candies you can add the value here which is seven and now you check do you have keys available in the box zero no that means you cannot open any other box from here but inside a zero you have box one and box two okay so you act, at least you can traverse to one and two so let's see this one if you look at one then the status of the box was initially zero okay that means it is a closed box it will not be able to open so we will be leaving it for the time being and focus on two two box is already open so what is the number of candies here four so add four here okay and now try to see what all keys do you get inside box two you get the key for one so open one change the status from zero to one so this closed uh, box now became open so now i can process it because i had actually traversed this node isn't it but before going there you have to check if there are any other boxes inside two there are no other boxes right so i can go to one and uh, its status is open now so add the candies which is five right and now you check uh, inside the box one do you have any keys no now inside one uh, do you have any other node to go yes i can go to three so let's go to three if you go to three the status is closed here so you cannot open it and you do not have the uh, key for three as well right and you are done with the traversal you don't have any other node to traverse therefore the total candies that you collected is 7 plus 4 11 plus 5 16 that is how the answer is 16 okay so i hope uh, you are absolutely clear with the graph representation of the contained boxes so you can assume that the contained boxes is already given in the form of an adjacency list this is your adjacency list okay you can represent that 0 has 1 comma 2 as adjacent 1 has 3 as adjacent then two do not have anything adjacent three do not have anything adjacent so this is already an adjacency list okay and the initial boxes can be considered like the source nodes from where you want to do the traversal how many how many type of traversals you can do dfs or bfs whatever traversal you prefer you can do it now let's look at the constraint in the constraint section uh, n is the number of nodes as i said then its max value is 1000 so even if you write an n square algorithm it is going to pass because our goal is to write an algorithm which runs in less than 10 to the power 8 number of computations status value can either be 0 or uh, or 1 saying whether it is locked or, or it is unlocked that means it is closed or open candies at i can be maximum 1000 and since there are 1000 node the maximum uh, some value can be 10 to the power of 6 which is well within our integer range keys dot length is maximum n okay these all values are also within n all the keys are unique and you can go through the rest of the uh, constraints as well all the values of the contained boxes are unique each box is contained in one box at most okay i think uh, the entire problem is clear so let's just recap the important observation this graph is a directed acyclic graph we can have multiple start boxes represented in initial boxes list we need to collect candies only from the open boxes not from the closed box a closed box may become open later if we happen to find its key in any other box right therefore we need to save such boxes for later processing if possible 
okay now let's do a dry run in this case i have uh, defined an example with the content boxes and this is represented as an adjacency list this is already given in the input status is given in input candies and keys are also given in the input i have already made a graph representation for easier understanding then we have initial boxes as 1 comma 0 stating uh, where actually we can start our traversal okay what all boxes we have to collect the candies if you look at the nodes i have marked uh, o and c as which boxes are initially open and closed for easier understanding it is also given in the status okay if you look one one is open then zero is open and then five is open rest all are closed two three four are closed right candy count is the corresponding nodes candy count that we need to add up right now if you want to do traversal from multiple start points i will prefer to do it uh, bfs on top of it so i will be using multi-source bfs how to do multi-source bfs you have to take a queue and uh, you have to add the start points the start points are one and zero which are the initial start points isn't it i will be taking a total variable a total variable which will be continuously adding all the candies so that i will be knowing what how many candies i collected by the end now let's start the bfs processing by taking out the first node and one will be our current node the first thing that i need to do is check if the status the status is open for one right that means i can process this box otherwise i will be uh, not able to process this i have to save it somewhere for later processing if possible but in this case i can process it the first step i have to uh, do is to check what keys are available so there are no keys that means i cannot open any other box then what to do next uh, we can just add the value to to the total and the total count of candies become two okay and now uh, we don't have anything else to do so i will be adding all the all the boxes that are contained inside box one that means the adjacent nodes so two will be appended all right now i will be taking out zero and our current node is zero so at zero this box is also open right then check out what keys are available no keys are available so i cannot open any box the next thing to do is to add the uh, candies that means i will be collecting the candies and then look at the adjacency list three and five and add it into the list for further processing that means these boxes are inside zero now take out the next node which is two so when you take out two then this box is closed this box is closed so i cannot process it but maybe i will be finding its key somewhere else for later processing right so i will have to save it somewhere therefore i will take a closed set closed set and inside this set i will be pushing to i will be pushing to so that if i can find the key for two while processing while uh, doing the traversal then i will be opening it up for further processing so i need to save it somewhere so i have taken closed set right now let's take out three so my current node is three it is also closed so again i will be saving it and i will be moving forward i will be taking out five right so when i take out five you check it is open state what are the keys keys two. that means two can be opened now so we have to check whatever key is available that status have to be changed okay you change the status and you also check if this uh, key actually exists in our closed set that means we have traversed it and saved it for later processing so yes it is present so take it out and append it in the queue right and uh, once you are done with this you check how many uh, candies are there at five so at five you have two candies at two candies it will become seven and look at the adjacency list it, it does not have anything so you are done now the next node to be processed is two so take it out and check the status the status of two is open it was opened right now you find the keys available in two you have the keys for three and four okay so change the status of three and four to one that we have done also side by side you have to check if three is already present in the closed set yes so remove it and append it in the queue is four already present in the closed set no so we cannot do anything for that now we need to add the current count of candies so make it eight and look at the adjacency list of two we cannot add anything into the queue 
and we are done processing two. Now the next node to be processed is three. So when you go to three, uh, then the status is already open. You check. Then at three, do you have any keys? No, you cannot open anything from here. Now the next step is to add the candy count. So this becomes 11. Okay. And after that, look at the adjacency list. It has four. So add four into the queue and that's it. You are done with three. Take out the next node, which is four. Check the status of four. It is open. Okay. Now you look at the keys. You do not have any keys at four, right? Now you have to add the candies. So this becomes 15. And uh, do you have any adjacent node? You do not have any adjacent node and you are done. When the queue is empty, then you are done with your multi-source BFS and whatever is the total will be the final count of candies. So I hope this entire approach is clear. In this particular approach, uh, we have traversed each of the node exactly one time. So you can say that uh, we are doing order of n parsing and the space complexity is going to be order of n because of the queue. All these space is already given content boxes status candies keys are already given the close set is order of n and this one uh, the queue is also order of n therefore the space complexity is order of n time complexity or order of n let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this problem we are given status candies keys contain boxes and initial boxes so we will be finding the number of nodes and apply multi-source bfs on this directed acyclic graph so I will be uh, taking a queue and push all the initial boxes in the queue. Take an uh, set which will be storing all the currently closed node which we are saving for later processing. Okay, now we will be starting our BFS using the while loop. So we are keeping a total counter which will be counting the candies, the maximum number of candies that we can collect and this is the BFS. Now inside the BFS as you know take out the front of the queue and then check the status if the status is closed then uh, we need to save it into the closed set and continue to the next node otherwise if the status is not closed then i will try to traverse to all the keys that are present inside the box and i will try to change the status of those boxes for which we have found the key and if i am changing the status for any closed box and it is already present in the closed set that means it was already saved for later processing then i will be removing it and appending it in the queue that is what we are doing here right and after checking out all the keys in the last step we will be adding the candy count to the total candy count and i will be traversing to all the neighbors in the adjacency list and pushing them into the queue after completing our entire bfs the total count will give you the maximum number of candies that we can collect starting from the initial boxes so this is the entire solution and i hope it is clear if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible see you guys in the next video thank you